guys, Sandra here from Create in Spain. Today I decided to try an experiment and see if I could scan in a stamped image just using registration marks and get it to do basically a print to cut without having to print because obviously my stamped image is there. And I'm delighted to say I've been able to do it without going through the scan to cut function in shortcut slot because that is fairly, it's a bit clunky. It, it works, it's fine. And you know, if you really have to do it that way, then go ahead. But it's a little bit clunky and this is a lot easier and a lot quicker. Now it does rely on you having a scanner. I haven't tried doing it with my phone, but if you've got a printer scanner, then this is an option that works quite well. But there are certain settings that, that I needed to have in place. So the first thing is I stamped my image several times using a stamping platform on a piece of paper on which I had already printed the registration marks. Now these are page registration marks. So I'm going to go over to my laptop now and show you exactly what I did. So I'm in shortcut slot 6 and I'm using version 6 because I have a Julia and that's the one that will go directly to the cutter. My registration marks are here and you might be thinking, well, why are they there? Well, it's pretty simple. If you go to cutter and you go to settings. Now, what I've got is mark inset from page bounds and I have put them four millimeters in from the edges of the page. I find that is perfect. It's close enough that I can get a really big print and cut out of this, but at the same time, I'm not in any danger of overstepping my print boundaries for my printer. So that's the way that I've got it set up. <laughs> Sorry, cat wants to get in on the action. Okay, so let's cancel this for the moment. This has put the registration marks on my sheet here. And all I'm going to do is go to file, page setup, make sure that my printer is set to the correct paper size, which it is. And then you go to file and you go to print. I'm not going to print it again. Make sure you have print registration marks checked and just go to print it. And it will print the piece of paper with the registration marks on it, but nothing else. And that's exactly what you want it to do for the time being. So now you should have your sheet of paper printed with the registration marks. Mark which is the top and which is the bottom because you may find that it makes a difference in certain circumstances. And then stamp your image on the piece of paper or wherever it is you want to stamp it. Now this is where having a stamp platform comes in because you want a really good crisp dark image in order to do a proper trace on it. It just makes life easier. So go to the trace function, choose your image, which is this one here. Now I happen to scan it upside down, but it doesn't make much difference. So I don't want the image layer added because I've already got my image and I've got it set to quite high contrast and I've got the despeckle on to make it a little bit cleaner and that's done exactly what I want to do. Now, if you want to trace things which are inside your stamp, then do not use the blackout, but I just wanted an outer line. So I'm not putting an offset on it just here, but you can if you want to. And you just click on OK and it's going to put that onto your workplace. Now come over to your palette and what I'm going to do is just take the colour out of it so I can see the lines more clearly. And you can see this is not lined up and it's also upside down. So I'm just going to rotate there. There we go. And I'm going to centre it to the page. And if you look very closely, let's zoom in here, you'll see that doing that I've got my design exactly where it should be over those registration marks. Now I'm just going to put this back to fit to window again. But at the moment, if I were to send this to my cutter, I would end up with these lines being cut as well. So what I'll do, right click, break apart, and I just want to remove the cut lines for, let's just select this, 
all those things on the top, take those away, all those things on the bottom, and I just want this cut line. Now at this stage I decided, yeah, I will put an offset on it, so I went to path, and I went to offset path, and I put a two millimeter offset on it. Then what you do is you go to cutter, you set it to whatever force and speed you want, and you do it as a print and cut, and you start your scan. And that is exactly what I did. Now I'm gonna go back to the paper portion of this and go back to my other camera. You can see if I take this off of here, Perfectly done print and cut with a two millimeter border. No problem whatsoever to cut out this stamped image. How did I set up my scan? That is the important thing. That is what's going to make sure that everything is correct. So I've got an HP Smart Tank 570. So this is directions for an HP and I'm using an Apple Mac. I don't know what your printer settings are, but you've probably got something very similar. So I used Image Capture, not the HP app or whatever it is. I don't have the HP app on my laptop even. So I used Image Capture for the scanning. Now I set it to use custom size, not just setting it to A4. And I set it up to do 150 DPI. And I set the auto selection to detect enclosing box. Now that seemed to make a difference. If I didn't set it to that, what it did was it restricted it to where the registration marks were and it interfered with the size of the output. So I used the detect enclosing box and then when I did that I saw that the little ant lines were going around the outside of the page which is what I needed it to do. And then I saved it as a PNG to my desktop. And basically that was it. It ended up being like any other kind of print and cut, except for the fact that I'd stamped the image. So yeah, it worked. So I see no reason at all why you can't do that for things like printed papers, if you've got something already on your printed papers, because as long as you can actually scan it, if you, put your registration marks onto it, you shouldn't have a problem. And if you've got an A4 printed sheet of car, for example, you can print the registration marks on that. So yeah, it has multi uses. And I found that to be very easy to do. And it's a lot more straightforward than using the scan to cut within shortcuts a lot. Now you might be wondering, can you do this with Leonardo Design Studio? I've not the faintest idea because at the moment I can't get into it because I updated to Sonoma on my Mac and it won't even let me open the program. <laughs> it's like, really? Okay, so I don't know, but if you can open it, maybe you can use the same kind of method that I've used. I have no idea. Just try it and see, and um, maybe it'll work and maybe it won't. When I eventually get my Leonardo Design Studio to work again, I will probably see if I can do the same kind of method. I don't know if it will allow it, but we shall see. It might, it might not. It might do it perfectly, it might just not want to do it at all. I've no idea. Now, of course, if you want to do it as a digital stamp, then put the background image in as well. Obviously, I wasn't doing that because I was doing the scan to cut around it. But you can obviously scan your images in the same way and make them into cut files. That's entirely up to you. Some people like to do that so they can use their stamps in different sizes. Sandy McCauley did a video on that recently. Hope you're having a good day. Have a nice weekend. I'll see you soon. Take care now.